All right, I'm recording the meeting now. So I'm just gonna go through these. Um, getting around, that's the topic for module seven and eight. Um, so first, the first thing is we're gonna be learning about the this Euler's paths and circuits. So it's spelled E-U-L-E-R, but it's pronounced Euler. Basically, the uh, getting around the situation is how do you optimize the path so that it has the least amount of basically work? And then it's called an efficient route. Um, it has a lot of applications in the real world, like mail uh, delivering things, garbage collections, like UPS. You don't want to spend too many, uh, too much gas driving around if you have, if you can't find the most efficient route, meaning the shortest route. So that's what we're going to be uh, studying, and that category is called the Euler circuit problems. So to go, to do so, we're going to be learning about a few terminal, uh, few words. So the terminology. So the map looks like this. So like if you see on the screen, the left side is a map of a city, and to the right, it's a simplified version. So we want to um, visualize the right, the the uh, what's it, graph B, as a lot easier way to do so. So then that's the that's the uh, graph. It's a picture. So we use the dots and then the lines to compose a graph. And so these edge, so these A, B, C, D, these are called the dot, those dots are called the vertices, vertex. And then the line between two letters like A and B, that's called the edge. So the, if the line's called the edge, and then these letters, the points or the dots, they're called the vertices, okay? If you look at this map, a few things, you see that it has six uh, vertices, so A, B, C, A, B, C, D through F. So that in mathematics, you uh, show a group or a set in this manner. So V is the collection of vertices, and use curly parentheses, and then you list the uh, elements inside, so A, B, C, D, E, and F. So this is, if you see something like this, that's a, that's a, what's it, a set, okay? So then edges, or E, it's going to be um, A, B, A, D, C, D, and such. Okay, so those are that's that's the collection or the set of edges. And if you notice, you see two CDs, CD here and CD here. So that be, that's because there are two edges here. So you list you list both of them twice because there are two of them. And then you you notice BB is there. So that's the um, the loop. It starts at a one. Um, what's it? Vertices, vertex, and comes back to that same vertex. If that's the case, that's the that's the loop or the double edge, or multiple edges, I guess. So the loop is the most common one. Uh, you you notice that the AD, oops, AD, and then uh, EB are crossing each other, but there's no getting off. Like you cannot go from A here and then get off and go to E. So there's no A to E uh, edge. There's only A to D and then E or B to E. And that's another thing is that the, it doesn't matter if you say it's A to D, A, D, or D, A as your edge. Typically, you would do it in alphabetical order. Okay. So that's what that is. So moving on, it's pretty self-explanatory. So you see this um, graph in everyday life, like if you describe uh, Facebook connections, you might see a graph like this. Sometimes you see all the vertices, but no edges. That's called the, it's still a graph, but then it has no um, edges, so then edge will be empty, or it's called the empty set. So you write it as E's parentheses with nothing in there, or this um, zero with the slash in through it, that's the null, so that's that describes the empty set. So if you see one of these, 
that's um, empty set. Okay. And then if you look at the pictures here, the left side and the right side, they look different, but they're exactly the same thing. Um, you, you notice that A to D, A to R, A to L, A to D, A to R, A to L. So it really doesn't matter how you draw your graph. It doesn't matter if you draw it the left way, the right way, you know, to the right. It really doesn't matter, but it, typically you see something like the left side because, you know, it's easier to read. So, but they're, this picture in the middle of the screen right now, they're the same. All right, so moving on. You might have to read, you might have to do a little reading in your book just to get the terminology done, but a few things you gotta know is adjacent vertices. Adjacent means they're next to each other. So like A and D and A is C, oops. A and D and A is C of um, adjacent. B, E, and B, F here are adjacent edges, okay? You have to know the thing called the degree of vertex. So basically how many lines are poking out of the dot? So uh, degree of A here, for example, is three, one, two, three. Okay, degree of D will be two, one and two. Degree of C will be one, two, three, okay. Uh, there are things called the even vertex and odd vertex. Um, it's even when the degree is an even number. So like D will be um, even vertex. A will be, a, will be an odd uh, vertex because that's the degree of three. A circuit, in particular, in this uh, module, it's it's a it's a closed uh, path, and then it's a travel only once. So, like E would be a circuit. A path is open, and then it's only travel once. So, like E to B to F, that would be a path. It's open. It doesn't look back to the original um, vertex, and then it's travel only once. So, like E to B to F will be a tra um, a path. The length of the, the path E, B, F will be two, so one, two. If you go to extend to G, that's gonna be one, two, three. The left picture is, oops, sorry, the right, the picture on the right, that's called a disconnected because they're basically disconnected with each other. So there's a left component and the right component here. Do you have any questions there? They're pretty easy so far. Just type in the questions if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, I'll uh, keep going. But any, can you hear me? I think she has her microphone. Okay. Okay. That's good. So, for example, like if you go from A B. C, A, D, E, so A, B, C, A, D, E, that's a path because um, I only travel each uh, edge once. It's a length of five, A, B, C, A, D, E. Okay. However, A, B, C, B, A, D, it's not a path because this, Edge right here, A, B has been traveled twice, okay? If I go from B, C back to B, that's a circuit because it goes back to the original vertex and it's a length of two because one here and one here, okay? In addition to that, you have to know what Euler path is and Euler circuit is, okay? So Euler path is a connected graph it's a path and it travels, you travel through all the edges, so all the edges, okay? The thing is, because it's a path, the edges can only be traveled once. So if I say something is the Euler path, you know now, you now know that it's a path, you go through every edge of the graph and it's traveled only once, okay, once and only once. So if I say something is the Euler path, now you know that every edge is travel once and only once. Same thing with the circuit. The difference is you go back to the original vertex. Okay. 
And then the thing is, you cannot have both e either path or circuit because it's physically impossible to have both because path is open and then circle circuit is a closed one. So you cannot have both the Euler path and then the circuit. So a graph is either or. Okay. So for example, if you see something like this, which one is the Euler path and which one is the Euler circuit? Well, you just have to kind of move around your fingers and see if um, if you go back to the original vertex. If you do not, that's a path. On the other hand, that's for the circuit. If you start from, say, C, and you follow this arrow, so here, 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 here. I'm going faster because you can follow it. But then for the right-hand side of the graph, you go back to C, so that's a that's a circuit, whereas on the left fixture, it's, it's a path, okay? So moving on, so you have to be able to uh, identify a path, or I mean the Euler path or, or uh, Euler circuit. Okay, so the question, so the next thing is we're gonna cover is uh, what we call the Euler's uh, theorems. Do you guys know what theorem is? Do you know what they are? Okay. So theorem means it's a mathematical statement that's been uh, proved uh, that's been uh, proven to be true. So if I give you a, a theorem, you can just use it as a given and taken, and so. For example, if you're answering the question, you say, because of the circuit theorem, my answer is this. And you have to explain what the theorem is. You just invoke the theorem and just say, because of the Euler, I mean, uh, because of the say, Euler circuit theorem, the answer is this, and that's your final answer. You don't have to explain your uh, logic behind or anything like that. Okay, so it's pretty useful. So I'm going to show you three different theorems. So Euler has three theorems. One is called a circuit theorem. Okay. It says if the graph is connected and every vertex is even, then it has an Euler circuit, at least one of them. There could be more, but at least there's one if the graph is connected and every vertex is um, even. In other words, if I say, take a look at this picture, is that an Euler circuit, yes or no? You can, um, if the graph has any odd vertex or vertices, then you know for sure it's not an Euler circuit. So let me show you an example here. I have three pictures in the middle, left, middle, and then the right right hand side. The left side is not an Euler circuit because for one, it's disconnected. Okay. One of the conditions for the um theorem is that the, the um, graph has to be connected. So if they're separated, boom, not an Euler circuit. Okay. The middle one is also not an Euler circuit because it violates the second condition, which is that the every vertex has to be an even, uh, even one. So for example, like C, if you look at C, that's a degree of three or G or E, any of these. So if if there's at least one vertex that's odd, then you know right away it's not a, a Euler circuit. Okay. The picture on the right-hand side is an Euler circuit because it's connected, and if you look at every single vertex, they're uh, um, even, so boom, there's an Euler circuit. Do you have any questions there? Pretty easy. You have to be able to identify Euler circuit, Euler circuit. Same thing with the path. Okay. So this says if the graph is connected and has exactly two uh, vertices, then he has an Euler path. Okay. Exactly two odd uh, vertices, then it's an Euler path. Okay. 
if it has more than two um, out of vertices, then it's not an Euler path. So pretty simple one. It has to be exactly two vertices in order to be a um, Euler path. So going back to the original problem of the of the map. So this is a map. I'm going to draw a picture of it, which looks like this. And the question is, if you see this picture, can you tell if it's a circuit or path? Well, it's not a circuit right away, I know it, because D has, um, what's that, the degree of three. Okay. And it's not a path either, because for the path to be um, Euler, it has to be two exact, or exactly two odd vertices. There's only one, or sorry. One, so this one's three, this one's three, and this one's three. So there's more than two. So that's why it's not a path either. So that's how you different. That's how you know if it's a circuit, Euler path. Or sorry. That's how you know if it's a circuit, path, or neither. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. The deal, the, the last theorem says um, the following, but before we get there, so the Euler circuit theorem deals with zero odd vertices. The Euler's path theorem deals with two or more odd vertices. So then the only scenario not covered by the two uh, preceding theorems is that the is that the case where the graph has only one odd vertex? Okay. Um, it cannot happen. A graph always have an even number of odd vertices. Okay. Uh, that's a, just uh, physics. You just cannot draw a graph just with the one odd vertex. There's going to be an open. Um, like open vertex somewhere, so it's just not physically possible. So now you know. Now you know the Euler's uh, three theorems. Okay. I'm not going to cover the Eulerizing the graphs. That you might want to read that just for. Um, I think it's in the maybe maybe it's in the discussion. I don't I, I don't recall, but the uh, there's a thing called exhaustive route. Um, I'll let you read this. You just have to follow step by step and you'll see what it means. Basically, if it's not an Euler uh, path or circuit, how do you make it an Euler uh, path or circuit? So, okay. So far, so good. Do you have any questions? Okay. The last part is algorithms. Algorithm. Um, this is for module A, so this is for not this week, but next week. Um, so I'm okay. Um, and in which part do you not understand? Sorry, the Euler part, like the previous part, or which part? Let me pause for a second and see what you have to say. The adverted, okay. Let me go back here. Yeah, you might have to reread it, but it, it's a bunch of a terminology. But here's the, um, here's a few um, words you gotta remember. So degree to vertex, for example, this vertex A here, that's a degree of three because there's three lines coming out, one, two, three. And so that's called the odd vertex if it has three, or like an odd number of lines coming out of it. So A will be a odd vertex because it has three lines coming out, one, two, three. D down here, it's called an even vertex because it has two lines, one and two. That's an even number. Two is an even number, so that's called an even um, vertex. Okay. 
the circuit is closed in the sense that you go back to the original vertex, whereas the path is open in the sense that it's kind of open and that you start from E, say, and then you go even up at G. That's a path. Right. That's the difference between the circuit and the path. And then the word circuit and the word path, they have specific specific meanings in the in this class for the time being. So the circuit and the path are not what you think in terms of like everyday language. Okay. So I'll go over there. Down here. It's for module eight. Basically, the brain, so if you think of um, how things are done, uh, for example, like Google Maps or Apple Maps, and if you punch in two uh, destinations, like the origin and then the destination, and if you, when you ask Google Maps, show me the fastest route, how does it do that? Well, it follows algorithm. He had some built-in um, brain into the maps to calculate what is the shortest route that is. Okay, that's what this is. I'm not going to go into details, but you just have to know what that what the algorithm is in a sense that it's like a sequence of events that you do in order to achieve something. So, for example, you might have an um, algorithm in a sense that in the morning you probably follow specific steps to get ready. You know, uh, get up and comb your hair, brush your teeth, drink coffee, get your car keys, um, you know, go to the garage, get in the car, get out and go to work or something like that. That's a sequence of events. That's basically what algorithm is. And then the best ones are the most optimized, meaning that it's the shortest way of achieving something. Okay. So that's something you have to be, you're going to have to think about for next week, you have to come up with one algorithm for you to like describe. It's really not that hard to do. The hardest part is optimizing it, you know, making it as short as possible. That's where the difficulty is. But coming up with one of them is not the big deal. So um, I'll let you think about it. But that's for next week. So if you have any questions in between, I'll let me know and I'll write you back, OK? Here's one example from the book. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but uh, if you if you're interested in how this works, you can read it. Um, so here was here's one example. Okay. So the key thing for this module is you have to be able to figure out the path and then the circuit. In addition to that, you have to know how to do um, how do you how do you know if it's a path, it's an Euler path, or if the circuit is a order circuit, you just use three theorems that I just described here. Okay. So let me look at the assignment. So module seven is pretty easy assignment wise. Okay. Uh, Jason, the degree sum. Some of the degrees basically just add up the degrees. Yeah, so that's module seven, very straightforward. Module eight gets into, let's see. You have to you have to identify the number of odd vertex, vertices and even vertices. So we just count the number of odd vertices and odd vertices meaning that, for example, like vertex, vertex two, it's odd because they have three lines poking out of there. You just have to count count how many of those are in that picture. And you have to decide if it's an Euler circuit or yes or no, Euler path, yes or no, and explain your answers. Well, let's say you say it's an Euler circuit, yes, or Euler path, yes. You just say according to uh, Euler's circuit path, the, these two conditions are satisfied for the picture, so that therefore it's a, a circuit or whatever, something like that. Okay, so you say something like that. If you determine the Euler path, you say because it um, meets the condition of exactly two odd vertices, therefore it's an Euler path, something like that. Okay, so that's how you use the theorem. 
And that's what I mean by explain your answers. Use use a theorem to make a decision, right? Um, and then so for four and five, same thing. If I if you determine graph one to be Euler circuit, tell me why. And you just say, well, because of the circuit theorem, it satisfies these two. Can, oops. The graph can satisfy these conditions. Therefore, it's an Euler circuit or something like that. Okay. Then thing for four and five. Pretty easy. All righty. Do you have any questions? Okay. Big no. Okay, that's good. So there's no uh, live session next week because it's a Thanksgiving week, and typically, well, typically people don't show up. Um, I mean, it's only been YouTube so far, but you know, you're probably busy with Thanksgiving. So, and I cover, I was able to cover. It so happens that I was able to cover both module seven and eight today. So, there's really no need for uh, live session next week. Okay. Let me stop the recording.